So is your below the hook lifting device ocean compliant? What makes it so? In this episode of The Rigging Professor, we take a look at some of the standards and give you a few recommendations on what can help keep you and your team safe. Hey guys, Devin here from Mozilla Companies, and today we're talking about below the hook lifting devices and their OSHA compliance. In this video, we'll cover whether a BTH device needs to adhere to OSHA or ASME standards, how safety and liability is impacted by the way those are manufactured, and then we'll wrap up with a few recommendations on how to keep you and your team safe and compliant. To help me tell this story, I brought back Dan Sherwood, who you might remember from one of our previous videos on Below the Hook, and he works with us here as a manager at Progressive Crane. And I just started by asking him how OSHA and ASME are applied to Below the Hook lifting devices. Any device that is going to be used in lifting um, has to have some type of tagging on it, uh, just, just for starters. So the B3020 is the standard that addresses all the tagging requirements for below the hook lifting devices. All right, but let's say that my engineering team manufactures and fabricates my own BTH lifting devices. Do I still have to worry about those codes? Just because you know your engineering team made it, it still has to comply with all of OSHA's regulations and ASME standards. Every lifting device out there needs to have a serial number, a capacity, uh, a weight if it's over 100 pounds, the date of manufacturing, um, it gets into more you know, voltage requirements, all of this if, if, it, if all that, that's applicable. Uh, but for any like mechanical device, then you need to have a design category and a service class. Design category and service class are the two things that help factor into how long a below the hook lifting device can last. But having your engineering team stick to the standard, that's what helps them make it safely. The standard is the guidelines on how to um, design something to make sure it's safe. You could have a whole team, room of engineers that you know, are fully capable of engineering it, but if, if they don't truly understand what the standard is and how to uh, apply the standard to lifting devices, you could be putting yourself in a, in a situation you don't want to be in. If you design and build a lifting device, 100% of the liability will fall onto that company. And a lot of companies like to put the liability um, you know, in the hands of somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, so a lot of times, you know, it, it's best to consult a, a reputable manufacturer of these devices to make something for you. Now, if assuming 100% liability doesn't make you the slightest bit uncomfortable, hopefully it's because your engineering team is OSHA and ASME compliant. Because as Dan told me, as important it is to make sure that you're following the standards, you've also got to trust that the people doing that work are certified to do so. You got to know who's welding on it. You got to make sure they're certified. Uh, the below the hook standard is the uh, AWS D14.1 is the welding standard. So you, ha you have to not only make sure you engineered it and designed it per all the, all the codes and standards, but you also have to make sure it was manufactured um, per the proper uh, welding, welding standard and welding procedures. I know it might seem like we're hammering this a little harder than other things, but that's because safety is so important to us. So let's say that you're on board. Can your safety team handle this task? If your safety team has had proper training, they can. Now per uh, OSHA, you only need one recorded inspection per year, and it has to be done by a certified inspector. Some of the common misconceptions are is that my uh, below the hook lifting device has to be load tested annually, or I need to have a mag particle test done annually. Per the ASME B3020, load testing is actually not a requirement of below the hook lifting devices. It's listed in there as a should, not a shall. Um, so any new manufactured below the hook lifting device does not need to be load tested. It's a high recommendation and um, you know most reputable manufacturers will try to load test everything that they possibly can. It's kind of the last uh, safety check on the engineering and manufacturing of the device. So if your safety team is certified, they can do a lot of your checks for you. But when it comes to load testing or particle testing, that's when you want to consider bringing in a third party. And Dan did tell me some recommendations. We recommend that you inspect your below the hook lifting device prior to every use. Just like at any sling, you want to take a look at it for any cracks, any deformations, anything that looks like uh, it might not be up to standard for lifting. Now, as far as OSHA recordables go, 
Um, you only need to have one recordable uh, inspection of your, your uh, rigging and lifting devices per year. We have customers that do monthly, bi-monthly, quarterly inspections of their devices, um, but that's PMing your stuff to, to catch any issues that might be coming on before an accident were to occur or a failures to occur. If for some reason, um, you know, let's say you, you were picking a load and, and you thought the load weighed, you know, we'll keep it easy. You thought the load weighed 500 pounds and your lifting beam was rated for 500 pounds. The load actually weighed 1,000 pounds and you picked it with your lifting beam. Uh, you could have done damage to your lifting device. Um, or, you know, over, over the life of the device, you know, you could have done a million picks with your device and the next pick you do is a million and one and just over the, the years of fatigue on it, something finally goes, you know, weld cracks or, or you know, a, you know something start, starts to go on it. You just want to look at kind of the main load bearing areas on a, on a device every time before you use it. I hope this video was able to help you get a better understanding of below the hook lifting devices and specifically how OSHA and ASME standards are applied to them. If you like this video, definitely check out the other video we made on what a below the hook lifting device is. And if you like that video and the rest of our Rigging 101 series, consider subscribing to the channel. It's a brand new year, we're gonna make a whole bunch of new content and I don't want you to miss out. Here at Mazzello Companies, we pride ourselves on being able to make sure that your team is safe and compliant when it comes to below the hook lifting devices and pretty much anything that gets gear in the air. And as always, if you have any questions, concerns, or if you just need some advice, don't hesitate to reach out to one of our lifting specialists. They'd be happy to help you however they can. Thank you for watching.